In this movie, we'll continue adding some special effects to this primary shape of the character's head. I won't show you every step along the way while we create the entire body, but I'm going to employ identically the steps that we learn on the head to the rest of the body. When we join up again after this one, we'll be looking at how we construct the legs to play well when we go ahead and do some skeleton rigging on that. So we've got our head. We have added the shadow in the layers option palette. What we want to do now is create a highlight for the frog's head so we get a greater sense of light. This will be a quasi 2D, 3D style for our animation. We could make it simple flat color. That is certainly an easy and great way to go, but you've got so many great tools in Anime Studio Pro that adding more sophisticated types of looks to your imagery are very easy. Let's look at how we do that. I'll close that render off and we want to create this highlight back behind the eyes like the sunlight hitting the top of the frog's head. Let me turn off the eyes right now and this is where we start getting into a little more sophisticated character building. I'm going to come down to my layers palette, add a group layer. I'll double click on that and we'll open it up and I'll call this one frog head. Inside this folder I'll now go ahead and move the frog's head with that layer selected, I'll add a new layer, and we will call this new layer Highlight. It'll be a vector layer. I'll double click on it. Let me rename that. And there we go. We're going to draw a shape that will become the highlight for the frog. But I simply don't want to draw a shape yet. First, I want to create a new style for that highlight. And the reason is, this highlight is going to be reused on other body parts of the frog. So I want consistency in color and consistency in special effects. I'll name this new style Frog Highlight. And under the color, I'm going to go ahead and just click down here in our swatches box and pick kind of a warm, lighter green that we can go ahead and put over the top. I will also add an effect to this, and that effect will be Soft Edge. When I choose that option, we get a modal dialog box that pops up and says, well, how blurry or how fuzzy do you want this? The default is 9. I want something much fuzzier than that, something more like 20. I'll hit the tab key and the preview will update so we can see what's going on. I'll accept that for now. The beauty is, if I ever want to change this because it is a style, across the entire body of the frog, everything will update simultaneously when I change this style. Well, now that we have a new style, the layer highlight is selected, let me create the shape that we will use for this highlight. Go ahead and create an oval, and it opens up with the default colors. Well, the first thing I want to do is come over to my Shape Select tool, keyboard shortcut Q, click on it, I'll come over to Applied Styles, and choose our new style, Frog Highlight. We can see that it's darkened up. I'm going to turn off Enable Outline because I don't want a black outline going on. And if we do a render right now, we'll see that when this renders, we've got, you know, it's a nice highlight, but man, it's really dark. The other thing is, and when I say dark, I mean opaque. The other item to consider is that I do want a black outline running around this much in the same way that we did with the eyes. So there's a couple things we need to change now. The first one is to go ahead and lighten up this color a little bit so that we can see the green underneath it. To do that, I'm going to come to the colors that we used in this special effect for that. So I will open up Frog Highlight, I will click on the color, and we get the Color Picker dialog box that comes up. Part of that is the alpha channel right here. So the alpha being transparency, we can see it listed right over here at 255 is purely opaque. Zero is completely transparent. We want something about in the middle, 128 or so. I'll select OK. This now is transparent or translucent. We can see the shape through there. That's looking OK. If we go ahead and render this out real quickly, that's looking a little more like the way we want it. I'm going to change the shape, keyboard shortcut A for add point. I'm going to add two points here, and Anime Studio Pro is changing the shape just a little bit automatically to ensure smoothness, but I'm going to move the points around. Keyboard shortcut T. I'm going to drag this down just a little bit, move that over, get a little more symmetry, and then pull this up just a little bit higher. 
This comes out over the corner of the cheek. That looks fine for now. But we can see, obviously, that it goes well beyond the frog's head. Well, that's why we created a new layer group for the frog's head. I'll double-click on this layer group, go to the Masking tab, come down to the option Hide All, and select it. We now have the frog head functioning, the group frog head functioning as a master mask for this. We come down to frog's head at the base and we look at its masking options. We'll see that this has been selected to add to mask. That is allowing us, if it wasn't on, we wouldn't see anything. If I said mask layer, which is usually the default when it comes in, everything disappears. By enabling add to mask, this becomes the base layer and functions as a little cookie cutter and only items you see within this base shape will show up. So let me enable again, add to mask, select OK. And now our highlight has been confined to the frog's head. A quick render reveals that it's showing up rather nicely right there. I'm going to change the blurriness of that a little bit, the soft edge, by opening the option controls for soft edge and make it blurrier still to something more like 40 and select OK. The next thing I'll do just to see how it's relating to the eyes is turn the eyes layer on, render, and we see we're getting some nice dimensionality to that. In our next movie we'll go ahead and take a look at some of the composed body parts and look at how we start developing the frog's legs.